Donnie Gardner here with the Boston Terrier Society. In today's video, we're going to be covering how to adopt a Boston Terrier from a rescue. I was able to interview Tara. She is the vice president of the Southern Cross Boston Terrier Rescue out of Jackson, Tennessee. She actually walks us through the process of adopting your very first Boston Terrier from her rescue, but it'll apply to all rescues across the United States. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. As far as adopting a Boston Terrier from your rescue, um, can you just walk me through the process of what that would be like? So right now, we currently have six adoptable dogs. That changes, obviously, from week to week, sometimes even day to day. Um, currently, we have three pending adoptions, so people that are set up for their adoptive date, we're just waiting on that to happen. And then we currently have 15 dogs that are what we call on hold. So those dogs are dogs that we have maybe just brought into rescue, that they're, we're giving them some time in their foster home to acclimate, find out their personality, you know, find out what kind of home they would work best in. Some of those dogs will be coming up for adoption soon. Some of those dogs include our forever fosters that I talked about earlier. So that's just a little bit about the dogs that we currently have in our rescue. As far as being able to find the Boston Terriers, you said you have six that are adoptable right now. Where would somebody go to see these Boston Terriers? Yes, so the best place to find them would be on our website, southerncrossbtr.com. We also have a few other places that you may find those dogs. One would be Pet Finder. A lot of people across the U.S. use that to look for adoptable dogs, so we're on there as well. And also our public Facebook page, Southern Cross Boston Terrier Rescue, on there we will make posts about available dogs. And from Facebook and Pet Finder, from there you would be actually directed to our website. That's where you're going to find the list of adoptable dogs and their bios on there. In the bio, you're going to see pictures, descriptions about the dog, how old they are, basically everything that you would want to know about that dog. As far as the application and everything, what does the application look like? When you complete an application, there's a screening process. The process itself usually takes about a few weeks, maybe a little longer, depending on how many applications we have at that time. Fill out the application, of course, would be the first step. And you may be asking, well, what kind of questions am I going to be seeing on this application? I will say it is rather lengthy, but that is just so we can provide the best home possible for a Boston and also find a great fit for you or your family. One of the things that it asks on there is what Boston are you applying for? So you put the name there. Or if you don't have one in particular that you want or you don't know yet, you can just leave that blank and we'll still process your application and find a good fit for your home. Other things that we may ask on the application are who's living in your home, how many adults are there, how many children, if any, are there, and do the adults in the home consent to the adoption? Because we want, obviously, everyone on board in that home for adopting a dog. We ask if you have a fenced-in yard. Now, a fenced-in yard is not a requirement to adopt from us, but if you do have a fence, we need to know if it's secure. And if it's not secure, you know, do you plan on just leashing the dog? We want to know that you're just not going to leave that dog unattended in, you know, a backyard that's not necessarily secure. Right. Same thing with a pool or a lake nearby or maybe in your backyard. Again, it's not that you can't have a pool or a lake. We just want to know that is it secure or are you going to take the steps needed to protect your dog from being harmed? Other things we're going to ask are the amount of time the dog's going to be left alone during the day and for how many days a week. That's just good to know because some dogs have separation anxiety at first or things like that. So we want to be able to accommodate the dog's needs, but also your schedule. We want to know where that dog may be staying during the day while you're at work, where you plan on the dog to sleep at night. The most important question, perhaps, why do you want a Boston? We also want to know, are you financially able to care, to, to care for that Boston? Not necessarily how much money do you make or anything like that, but are you financially prepared to, you know, pay for a vet bill every year for their yearly checkups, things like that? And we ask about how you might handle certain behavior problems if you came into contact with them. And again, there's no right or wrong answer on that. 
it's just putting it out there so you can think about those things and maybe realize like, hey, these are some of the things I may end up dealing with, you know, with when adopting. We ask about current animals that you have in the home or have had in the past because that's what we're going to use for the next step of the process, which is the vet reference. So with that, we're just making sure that current dogs that you have are up to date on shots and heartworm prevention, making sure that they've been spayed or neutered. And if all of that checks out, your vet reference looks good, the next step is the home visit, and that is done by a volunteer. Usually we have a volunteer that comes to your home for the home visit, and that's a time that we set up that's convenient for you and your schedule. In certain situations, if we don't have a volunteer in the area or it's just not able to work out with schedules, we can do a video home visit. And we kind of make unique exceptions for those. We like to have a volunteer there. But a good example of that is right now with everything going on with COVID, we're obviously not sending out volunteers right. um, into people's homes with social <laughs> yeah. distancing. Um, so a good example of that is right now where we are doing only video home visits and hopefully that will subside soon, but that is always an option if needed. And again, in that home visit, we're just making sure your home is safe for a dog. Our volunteer is going to observe the other pets in your home, you know, make sure that they're cared for. That's also a good time for that potential adopter to ask any questions to the volunteer that they may have since you have someone in front of you that um, is experienced with the rescue. So at that point, you've got your application, your vet reference is checked out. If the home, the home visit is approved, and that's through a process where the volunteer goes home and fills out a form and sends us, and we look that over. If the home visit is approved, the next step is the rescue itself, taking a look at everything collectively all together, and if they feel like it's a good fit, at that point, we'll send the application over to the foster home for the foster parent of the particular dog um, being applied for. The foster parent will look that application over. At that point, we put the applicant in touch with the foster parent. They get together, talk, and gives the potential adopter to ask any more particular questions about the dog. Also, if the foster parent has any other questions. Something that may be a little unique about our rescue is at the point that the application is sent over the foster parent, it is technically approved, but we always give the foster parent the final say-so on the adoption because that foster parent knows this dog better than anyone else in the rescue. They've spent the most time with this dog. And so we just give that power to the foster parent to make sure that, yes, I think this is a good idea. You know, we should go through this. I think this will be a good match. And if the foster feels like it's a good fit, we go ahead and set up the adoption day at that point. Is there any type of support that the rescue provides after that? Absolutely. On the adoption day, there is a fee that you're going to be paying before you pick up the dog. That fee is anywhere from $150 to $400, and that is based on the age of the dog. So once the adoption takes place, you pay your fee, everything is settled, we don't just leave you. Again, like mm -hmm. I said earlier, we have that private Facebook group, which I feel is our most important asset. People can ask questions on there, and, you know, there are people on that group that have, you know, way more experience than I do in things. You know, even I ask questions sometimes, and it's just a really good resource for um getting questions answered or problems are always available by email or phone. We are there to support you after your adoption with, with any needs that you may have. If you want to adopt a, do a Boston, but you don't see one that you're interested in at that time, I always tell people, just go ahead and file an application. We'll process it. Go ahead and get it approved, so to speak. And then um, we'll keep that on file so that when we get a Boston in, that we think may be a good fit, we can take a look, get in contact with you and say, hey, we have this dog, tell them about that dog, you know, are you interested? And it's at that point, we'll critique the application a little more just to make sure that it is a good fit. So I would say, yes, it's definitely a good idea to go ahead and fill out an application, especially if you're looking for, you know, 
a younger dog, those are sometimes harder to come by depending on certain factors. So that's always a good idea to go ahead and file an application. As far as words of advice for somebody that maybe wants to foster a Boston Terrier or adopt a Boston Terrier, what would be your word of advice? I would just say if you're looking to adopt or foster, if you're looking to get involved in rescue in any way possible, I would say that you won't regret it. Just go ahead and do it because it, it is one, really one of the most rewarding experiences, whether it be fostering or adopting. As far as people getting into contact with your rescue, what would be the best way for them to do that? The best way to find out information about our rescue is through the website, like I said, southerncrossbtr.com. The best way to know what's going on with our rescue on a continuous basis is by following our, our Facebook page, Southern Cross Boston Terrier Rescue. Like I said, that's where we list dogs for adoption. That's where we post about any fundraisers that we may be having, and it's also where we post adoption pictures of new adopters and their dogs. We do a lot of fundraisers throughout the year. Uh, sometimes online auctions are one of our big ones. Also, we do something called the Boston Tea Party every year in Nashville. It takes place in October. It's just a good time to bring your dog, get pictures made. We have a treat walk. We do a live auction there, a Boston kissing booth. Just really a lot of fun, a way to meet people and also obviously raise money for our Bostons in need. So Facebook page and also our website are probably the best ways to, to find out what's going on with our rescue. All right. Well, Tara, thank you so much for being on the podcast and everything. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you want her full exclusive interview with Tara, be sure to check the show notes below and you'll be able to find the full YouTube video as well as podcast where we also covered how to become a foster parent for Boston Terriers. And she gives you a rundown of exactly what the Southern Cross Boston Terrier Rescue is all about. If you don't live near Jackson, Tennessee, or the surrounding areas that their rescue encompasses, you can check the show notes below as well. And there's a full list of Boston Terrier rescues throughout the United States, as well as a few in Canada. Thank you so much for listening to today. Be sure to click subscribe if you want to learn more about Boston Terriers. And I will talk to you guys later in the next video. Thanks. Bye.